well done to the Strokes for making it into the top five. You but deserve you, it. I reckon that's top three. I mean, a lot of people would say it is, and I, 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 I'm I, not against it. Defo Googled best indie rock albums. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying when I was doing research for this Neutral list. Milk Hotel. Yeah, man. Yeah. The best indie rock album of all time is... Hello, welcome back to the Man Overboard podcast. This week, it's another top 10, and it's the top 10 indie rock albums of all time. Now, indie rock is a very vague terminology, as I've come to find, like doing a little bit of research for albums that I might have put in my Okay, Tim, stop trying to cover your tracks, right? I'm Let's not jump. trying to cover my tracks. I'm Let's just making a point. Let's jump into Let's things. Let's jump into Number it. 10. <laughs> Right at the bottom, but still a banger of an album. For me at number 10 is The Kooks. Ooh. Inside in, outside out. The Kooks are a legendary English indie rock band, and I love them. I've seen them a bunch of times. They're always really fun live, and they have got potentially the, well, not the biggest, one of the biggest indie bops of the last 20 years, in my opinion, and that is one of my favorite songs off the album, Naive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good show. That's Everyone knows that show. tune. Everybody knows that. Goes off at any festival. If you go to like an indie club night or something along those lines, Naive is 100% playing. But then this album also has some other bangers. Seaside is a bit more of a chill song, uh, a bit of a love song. I've always liked that one. Uh, and then she moves in her own way is another Ooh, big, big that was track. a that was a big track as well, wasn't well, it? This, when, this when, whole album was. When was this album released? I actually don't have that wrote down. Be early 2000s. Yeah, right? early 2000s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or and mid, maybe like 2007 would be my guess. And to say that you could go into any indie club nowadays and probably still hear either one of those two songs, that's a bit of a testament to uh, The, the Kooks they are. are truly legendary in the indie scene. Mm -hmm. Tim, what's your number 10? So my number 10 pick for top 10 indie albums of all time is Franz Ferdinand by Franz Ferdinand. Mm. So this album was released in 2004, and anybody who lives in the UK will be able to tell you at least one of Franz Ferdinand's songs. Um, the ones I've gone for off this album are This Fire, um, The Dark of the Matinee, and obviously the biggest track that I think Franz Ferdinand have released to date, which is Take Me Out. Do you know what's weird? I love this album, by the way, but I feel like most people don't appreciate how big Franz Ferdinand actually were in this era. They were absolutely massive. Like Again, like you were saying with the Kooks, this is one of those bands that you couldn't go to many places without hearing mm -hmm. some kind of song that was by Franz Ferdinand and Take Me Out in itself. Oh. I think Take Me Out was potentially bigger than the band. We've come out with two bangers for yeah, number I know, 10. straight away. But yeah, they were that big. They actually headlined Leeds Fest once. Did they? Yeah, sure. Oh. I think it was straight after this album. I mean, it makes sense. This yeah. this was this was their debut album, I think, as well. Mm, yes. Yeah, self titled yeah. and fantastic. Album. It's like imagine Sam Fender vibes, where he releases one or two albums and then headlines Leeds Fest. These are the same level. They were that big. Yeah, but they were absolutely massive back yeah. then. Yeah. Should we go on to number nine? Oh, come on then. Number nine is, in my opinion, one of the most underrated British indie bands, Ooh. and it's Block Party. Oh, with Silent Alarm. Oh, ho, ho. Now that's a shout. That's a shout. I mean, I'd be surprised if you don't have it on the list. Not on the list. Oh, I've mentioned them a bunch of times. I thought this might have been one you've heard me mention, and you've been like, "Yeah, I'll steal that." <laughs> um, but now, Silent Alarm is from top to bottom an underrated gem from Block Party. It captures the vibes of British music within that moment. Some of the big bangers, Banquet and Helicopter are the two big hitters and to this day, still Block Party's biggest songs. Absolute bops. Uh, and then Like Eating Glass is my third favorite track off the album. But as a whole, Block Party are criminally underrated. They're actually doing a big outdoor gig headlining, I think it's Crystal Palace this year for the first time in celebration i think it's the 20th anniversary of this album Fucking so yeah block party underrated legends i'd kind of put block party in the same realm as mgmt and i know we spoke mm. about them before as well in the terms of criminally underrated for the music that they produced over their entire career because yeah. they've always been consistent in what they put out and i mean at the starting gates with an album like that you know i mean the fact that they still carried on making that quality of music and I think, like MGMT, they're one of those bands where people know the songs, but might not know the band name. Yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. Should we move on to my number nine? Let's do it. We're going in with Arctic Monkeys in at number nine. 
It's uh, early. I know it's early, but just, just, uh, just you just have to hold on and mumble. wait. Hold your hats. Hold your horses. I'll hold my hat. I'll tip my hat. <laughs> uh, whatever people say I am, that's what I'm not. Arctic Monkeys, 2006. We've spoke about this album. Yeah. And this hits nearly every list, and I think it's unfair for it to not be featured on a list. Uh, the reason it's so low down for me is because we speak about it so much that I think it doesn't need its praises singing too much more. Uh, tracks off this is From the Rich to the Rubble, When the Sun Goes Down, I Bet You Look Good on the Dance Floor. Top to bottom, absolutely stacked out with UK bangers. Everybody mm. in the UK will know at least, if not three maybe four songs off this album oh, yeah a million percent is a classic i don't really think i need to say much more than that yeah i must admit we've covered that album go watch the top Do top 10 debut albums yeah. of all time if you haven't seen it because we spoke about that in much more detail but you're right the people have heard and everyone knows that this is just an indie just banger fantastic on to another indie banger my number eight mm. is two door cinema club i was expecting them I was expecting them. Tourist history. Ooh. So this album is the album that got me back into rock music. So when I was like 13, 14, I was on more the vibes of a bit of house, a bit of drum and bass. I was never like mega into even probably music as a whole at that point. But this album was given to me by a friend and I fell in love with rock music and indie rock from this. So some of the big tracks, Undercover, I don't know how to say this. I don't know if it's Undercover Martin or Matron, but that's the song. It's the one that has a little riff at the start and it goes. Yeah. But I have had such good memories with this tune. A time at Live at Leeds last year, it was me and my brother, my best friend of years, just bouncing around to this track and actually for the whole two door gig. I've seen them so many times in so many different venues and they're just elite live, always put on a good performance. I can't lie, I didn't know the name of that track. I know exactly which track you're talking about, but I, I didn't know the name yeah, of it. Yeah, it's spelled weird. It's like Undercover Matron, I think. Is it M-A-T-R-O-N? It's M-A-T-Y-R-N or something, or M-A-Y-T-R-N. Is it Marta, maybe? Yeah, yeah, it yeah, might be. Undercover Marta. Yeah, yeah, yeah that'll yeah, be yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, there you go. I was yeah. reading it yeah, earlier. Yeah. I probably should, I'm, I meant to look <laughs> before this, but I just forgot. No, you're so. getting it wrong anyway, um, it's fine. And then another track off this, actually the opener to the album, and one that which I think sets the tone really well. It's called Cigarettes in the Theatre. Uh, it just, it just when you, do you know when you start listening to an album and you know straight away, all right, this is going to be good. Or that it gives me that feeling still to this day. And then the big, big banger from Two Door across the whole discography is What You Know. Um, this song has had such a lasting impact to the point now where anyone that's seen Tudor, anyone in the country, I think, has heard this multiple times. Whenever you see it live, the vibes are immaculate. It's one of those, on a sunny field, I don't think there's a much better track, in the UK at least, than what you know. Fair point, fair point. Top I level. Can't argue that, cannot argue Tim, that. Tim, number eight. Number eight for me is going to be Vampire Weekend by Vampire Weekend. Mm. So this was dropped in 2008. And uh, this album in itself, I think the album cover is very prominent. And I think a lot of people, if you say Vampire Weekend, will automatically think of this album over any of the other ones. Um, I'm sure somebody will correct me if I'm incorrect there. But I think this album is potentially their best album from their entire discography. Um, we've got a couple of bangers on there. We've got Campus, Oxford Comma, and potentially Vampire Weekend's biggest tune in A-Punk. Oh, A-Punk. What a big bop. Which is just... I don't... I feel like A-Punk doesn't really feel like any other song in their discography mm. for some reason. To me, it kind of stands out on its own and is in its own field versus the rest of their music. Um, but A-Punk, I think, has transcended even the genre and has ended up on, you know, you see it on TV shows. Guitar Hero. Guitar Hero, yeah. yeah. Um, FIFA, I imagine it was on at some Probably. point. It's just got that... Was it? Hey, hey, in hey, between us? Hey. In between us could have yeah. been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I can see so. that being like a cutaway. I it think was, it was. Hey, hey. And then uh, I think it was on like a Curry's advert. It was. On, it just, it's just everywhere. It's just everywhere. And the bit where my favourite part of the song is the ending, where it just ends, and it just ends with, hey, 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 hey. Just, just that on its own. Cuts off. Bang. Fucking fantastic album. You see, I love that song, but I've not really listened to the full album much. Weirdly enough, Vampire Weekend did release an album a couple of weeks ago and I listened oh. to the full thing and it was quite good, actually. I quite enjoyed it, but it wasn't one that I'd regularly rotate. So well, you should get this one on and get at least Campus and Oxford Comma listened to because those are easily my two other favourites, but A-Punk outshadows everything on that album. Yeah, in my big opinion. dubs. I'll check it out. Number seven. Ooh. I expected your list to stink, but it's been quite good it's been so, all far. Right so far. I'm, I'm, it? I'm proud of you. I think number seven might be one where you'll go, ooh, but we'll see. Well, my number seven is Jamie T. 
Ooh. Panic Prevention. Which one's that? Is I think it's his first or second album. Right, it okay. is the album that includes Sheila. Yeah. Which yeah. You, Huge. Yeah, massive. I think Jamie T as well, he's a very British artist, mm -hmm. but he's also a unique artist in that indie rock space. He came out with a sound that hadn't been seen too much, obviously in the same era as like the streets and stuff, which we're say doing the streets. not yeah. too dissimilar things in terms of that more like spoken wordy singing style type thing. But yeah, Jamie T, um, this album is incredible. Um, you've got Sheila, So Lonely Was The Ballad, and If You Got The Money. All bangers. If you got the money, I think he's criminally underrated. It's still quite a big track, but Jamie T as a whole has consistently produced good albums throughout his whole career. And he's never... I don't know how big he was in the 2000s because I wasn't there. I would imagine rather large. But recently he did Finsbury Park last year and I was surprised because I thought, is he big enough to do Finsbury? Definitely and still he, big enough. He, he practically sold it out. I think there was only a couple thousand tickets left. So I was impressed by that. But... Yeah, Jimmy T. I also really love his B-Sides album, which is weird. Um, his B-Sides album had some of my favourite songs from him on, but Panic Prevention, just amazing. I think the thing is with Jamie T is like you were saying, he's in that era of the streets and there was definitely a vibe in UK music culture of talking about... I mean, it's the same with um, Arctic Monkeys around that time as well. Mm. They were doing songs that was about British culture, doing British things, going down to the calf. Sheila going out with her mate Stella and gets yeah. pulled all over a fella. Like it's all, it's all, it's, if somebody from another country were to listen to any of the albums, indie albums from 2002 to 2006, they will get a great idea of what living in the UK would be like and nipping down the calf to see your mate Phil or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like, i love to see it. Yeah. You said your next shout might be sus, so I'm ready. So we've got uh, Transatlanticism by Death Cab for Cutie. So this was dropped in 2003. I can already see that face coming in there. So this was the album that kind of, this was their last foray as like an indie rock band. This was before they kind of, you know, they, they moved on to more of a mainstream sound. Uh, and this album kind of encapsulated the move from more indie sounding music to more pop, you know, more mm -hmm. like mainstream music. So it kind of, merge the two worlds together and I think it's just absolutely perfect from top to bottom the way that they've melded multiple genres into one um it, it honestly it's consistent throughout uh, it gives you goosebumps it, it like there's there's a couple of tracks on there that you can listen to and you'll be in your feels if you've fully listened to the lyrics and the music and everything with it uh, the tracks that I'm gonna go with are transatlanticism itself I've said that right twice now and I was I'm so proud. worried about that man <laughs> a, a lack of color and their potentially their biggest track, which is a uh, title and registration. So that's the. Uh, do, 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 do. do you know much Death Cab for Cutie? Not at all. I not thought they were all. a pop punk band. Oh, true. Okay. No, no, no. No, not at all. I, no. No, I can't comment yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, title and registration was a song that um, I think my brother was a big fan of this band when I was right. younger. And I always remember hearing him playing that specific song because he was a little bit of an emo kid. He wasn't, but he was into like his. So it's Indians. not pop punk, but emo. It's not, you know, it's not even emo. Oh. It's not emo. It's like, it's, it's indie. It's a hundred percent indie. I'm, I'm confident in that. It's just that it kind of melds a lot of different oh. topics and it's a very heartfelt album uh, and title and registration, the track itself. Again, I'm just going to keep harking about that because I absolutely love it. And I just think it's great. And, uh, yeah, I'm surprised you've not listened to them before. To I've, be I've th I have listened to them, but not, I, I couldn't name a song. I feel like people banned them. It banned them into the same category of bands as like Funeral for a Friend and uh, those sorts of bands. Mm. Whereas I'd kind of, uh, difficult to say, but I'd say for relevancy for you, they're more akin to Radiohead okay. than they are, you know, Funeral for a Friend and that side of things. Rather than it being like heavy emo rock, it's more like a bit moody, alty. moody, ulti yeah. kind right. of. Well, yeah. it's one yeah. I'll definitely check out. Yeah, worth it. My next one is one that I think anyone listening would say I've got criminally low. Criminally low. I said that correct. <laughs> okay. Criminally low. That doesn't sound like a word anymore. Criminally low. Criminally. Yeah. Uh, criminally. criminally. How do you say it? Criminally. Yeah, that's just weird. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> it is. Criminal. You bloody criminal. It is the Smiths. The Queen is dead. Oh, okay. <laughs> In at number six, which as I that's said- very low. A lot of people will say it's very low, but- 
I kind of took your advice from other older episodes and I don't mind this album. I think it's pretty good. I can appreciate how influential it is, but it's not something I bump on a regular basis. Yeah, that's fair enough. I so get like, that. I get it, that. it definitely deserves a spot on the list. And if you were like a writer, fair enough, you'd probably put it higher. But, you know, I got my first to this. I ain't listening to the Smiths on a regular basis. Yeah. And I feel yeah. like the Smiths have become, in the modern age, the band that people who want to be seen as indie really like. Yes. Because yeah. they're seen as indie if they like the Smiths. But I don't know. I don't, I, I, it's a good album. The big tracks for me are There Is A Light That Never Goes Out, there which- There is a light that never goes out. Sorry. I just love that song. Uh, you always do these singing interludes yeah, well, and it makes me laugh. Whenever I know a song, I'm going to sing I might have to it. clip up all the bits of the pods where you've done a little sing-along. We'll and make just, an album. We'll post um, it on Spotify. Big Mouth Strikes Again. Yeah. You when you start singing in the middle of the... Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, and Some Girls Are Bigger Than Others, just because it proper made me laugh. I was re-listening to this album the other day when I was creating this list, curating it. And I was like, this is such a weird track. There's a lot of... Start talking about Some Girls' Mothers Are Bigger Than Others. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. what the I, I just had to put it in there. I think, I think what you were saying about modern The Smiths, I think Morrissey has kind of put a bad taste in a lot of people's yeah. mouths Johnny for Mar, The Smiths as a whole. Johnny Marr's a legend. Morrissey's a wanker. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah. So I I think a lot of people now see the Smiths as like a pretentious, like, oh, you, d you don't listen to real music. You don't listen to the Smiths. And it's kind of like, well, I, don't know. I like the Smiths. Don't get me wrong. Mm. But I can completely understand why people kind of don't really care about them Well, I much. think they're good. But as I said, I think it's the type of thing, you know, like what you would class as a Tumblr girl or maybe an Insta girl nowadays yeah. that wants to be indie will buy a Smiths final and yeah. never listen to it. Yeah. They just put a picture of the Queen is Dead album cover on their the Instagram Morrissey and that's, like that. yeah, yeah. that's yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. They are, they're a fantastic band and they have an amazing discography. But for me, they can't go in my top five. So they got in at number six. Fair enough. That's fair enough. That's What's your right. number six? Young my Timothy? number six is The Stone Roses by The Stone Roses. A lot of people will also say this is a bit criminally low as well. Crim, crimin, criminally, criminally low. You said it what's exactly that, the same as me. What's then? with that smile that I've mentioned Stone Roses though? Well, because we got a lot of hate for not having we, them in our indie, de not in no, our debut. album debut. Correct. List. Yes. Yeah. So because this isn't this isn't really about debut albums and comparing mm. them because there's a million more albums oh, yeah. that I put over this. In terms of indie, this was released in 1989, which is you know, ages before it started to kind of become its own thing. And I think they were kind of like the forefathers of the indie movement. I know it existed before then and people will say, oh, what about this band? It's from 1960. Yeah, the bit, the ones, but. This is, uh, I mean, it's my favourite Stone Roses album. And this is one of those albums that when I was younger, I used to go through a phase of just liking an entire album on Spotify rather than just liking single songs. So I know this album top to bottom f through shuffle on my Spotify playlist and stuff like that. I just love it. The songs I've gone for are Bye Bye Bad Man, uh, I Am The Resurrection, and the classic Fool's Gold, which, mm -hmm. it, again, a huge... There's a lot of indie tracks that became absolutely massive songs across all genres of, you know, medium, like, you know, you had the TV and football. Yeah. I think Fool's Gold was mostly related to football. Yeah. I think you could hear that on any FIFA game. You could hear that on any football show. Uh, a couple of honorable mentions, because I just love this album. Um, I Want To Be Adored. Fantastic. You want to be a door? I want to be a door. Right. Yeah. Uh, waterfall. Yeah. And this is the one. Do you know, I deeply considered putting this on my list and spoiler alert, it's not on there, mm -hmm. but I do agree that as a whole album, it's fantastic. And I think the impact that the Stone Roses had in terms of people have still got lemons and stuff in their names because of them. Because of them. Yeah. Because yeah. of this album. Yeah. It, this, this created a whole thing of indie i mean they massively inspired oasis etc so i mean they've, they've even got clubs stone roses clubs there's one in leeds yeah. and i think there's one in liverpool maybe or something like that huge band absolutely huge yeah. and it's a shame that mr ian has decided to fall off his rocker and go absolutely insane and become a karaoke act wasn't but he doing karaoke with nunchucks on his last tour something fucking insane i don't remember what it was but he's one of those characters in the same way that morrissey that it's like if you just forget that they exist and just keep it to prior to the year 2000 You'll be all right. Just don't look at any f recent news about them. Well, speaking of banger debut indie albums, my next shout is The Strokes, Is This It? That's really low. Why? At number five? Yeah. Top five? That's fire. Do you reckon? Well done to The Strokes for making it into the top five. You Are deserve you? it. I reckon that's top three. I mean, a lot of people would say it is, and I, 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 I'm not against it. It's only two off, but... 
last night, Sunday in the modern age, I mean it gets fifth. Not any higher, unfortunately. I feel like you're going to try rinse me for what's higher now, but I am not. Oh bothered. no, I don't. I don't. I, you know the thing is, I came into this episode thinking I'm going to get cooked. This is it. I'm washed. This is game over for me. No. But I'm starting to wonder what could be in your top four now. Now that you've kind I, of, the, I actually don't think the top four is quite. When you hear him, I think you'll go, "All right, fair enough." But no, I think I will. Yeah. The, the thing is, for me as well, when I originally wrote this list, I actually put the Strokes, the New Abnormal, in there because I prefer that as an album. Yeah. But I think because of how well this was received and the impact it had on indie rock at the time and it was one of the first big american indie rock i know there's other ones of course but american indie rock brands bands that just broke the world I, I, it's got to be in there and it is an absolute banger of an album honestly the strokes are one i'm yet to see live we've spoke about this a few times so i won't jump into it too much but i really want to see them. Um, legendary band yeah fifth fair play fair play okay we're on to my fifth which is a repeat offender They've been, up, they've been on my list higher up, and it's Arctic Monkeys again. They're back, and we're going with Favourite Worst Nightmare. Now, this would have been the album that would have replaced um, whatever people say I am if it were a debut album. I would have definitely put this over them. Uh, albeit the debut album is one that, you know, from top to bottom, I would say is, mm, whether it's better or not, the songs that are on this album and what it did for Arctic Monkeys over the first album, I think, make it higher up the list for me. See, this wouldn't have even been my second pick for Arctic Monkeys. Do you not reckon? No, I'd have put AM above it. Mm, see, I'd Yeah, but AM was like, Arctic Monkeys hadn't fallen off, but they hadn't, they weren't right at the forefront around the world and AM just exploded. It did, them. yeah, it did, yeah. Um, but again, I think this is more kind of like a personal thing as well, okay. because this felt like a, a, a heavier album than the ones previous to it. Yeah. There were songs like uh, Teddy Picker, mm -hmm. which I knew Teddy Picker prior to knowing who the fuck Arctic Monkeys were. <laughs> Mental. So I like I adore that song so much. And then like it, it was only after I started listening to Whatever People Say You Are and those kind of albums that I kind of went, oh shit, this is the band that did Teddy Picker. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, then I've got Brian Storm, which again, a fucking huge track, really like heavy, really fucking I still call it Brainstorm. Powerful. Yeah, I, I mean, I no, I almost did. So um, I had to make sure I did. I it. know but it's, it's because, not. It's but because he goes, Brian. That's the only reason I know it's Brian Storm. One of the best drumming performances in their entire discography as oh, well. Oh yeah, yeah. Not that drumming best. intro is mm. fucking insane. And then uh, Fluorescent Adolescent is uh, my third pick for that album. But there's an honorable mention of one that cannot go amiss, which is 505, yeah. which again... I think is possibly one of their biggest tunes going um, and one of the reasons why this got so high up on my list. I respect it, to be honest. All of those songs are big bangers. I remember Fluorescent Adolescent. I have a core memory in my head of being into that song and playing it around the house when it wasn't cool in my friendship group to like rock music. True. But everyone respected that song still. Yeah. Everyone was like, no, this is just a banger. You can get away with that one, Joe. No, it didn't, I, yeah. I, I was getting like, away with Blink at the same time. So <laughs> Yeah, I feel like Arctic Monkeys were one of those bands where it didn't matter what genre of music you were into. You could still like it because it had like insane guitar riffs. It had really good drumming on it. The vocal performance was very British and, mm -hmm. you know, it sounded familiar. Uh, and I just think, yeah, I, I, they're not even underrated in the slightest no, at not. all. They're just great. They are a great band. I'm fighting the urge to talk about them live again. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to instead go on to my fourth best indie rock album of all time. And it is The White Stripes, Elephant. Okay, yeah, yeah. So this was a close contender for my list as well. No. Didn't make it, but... Ooh, no. I'm surprised. The White Stripes were just unbelievably massive. Mm -hmm. Un like... The, the size of that band, they didn't last an unbelievable, a massive amount of time, which is why they, well, obviously they're not a band anymore, which is probably why they don't get brought up in conversations as much. But Elephant, for me, Seven Nation Army. It's bigger than everything. It's is that, bigger is, than everything. Is that the biggest song in the world? Is that the biggest indie rock song ever? I think it could be. Do you know what I mean? I, I genuinely think it could be. You hear fucking stadiums in America doing it. But the Everywhere. thing is, about White Stripes... That's a big banger, and most people know them for that. But the whole albums, all of them, are actually really, really, really good. good. Really good. The, the content throughout the whole discography is fantastic. Jack White is a genuine like genius when it comes to music. He anything he touches is gold, 
and it can't be questioned. But I feel like they're one of those now in the modern day. A lot of people know their other songs as well, but people just think of Seven Nation Army, but they are much more than that. And the other big tracks for me on this album is Ball and Biscuit and The Hardest Button to Button. Oh, okay. Have you ever struggled okay. to button your button? No, no, I don't really use buttons anymore, I don't think. Oh, well, Unless I'm wearing like a shirt, I guess. Okay. Um, one thing about the White Stripes that's interesting is when they first kind of made it onto the scene in the early 2000s, um, you know about their relationship, the two members? Yeah. So it's, w- what relationship do you think they have? Are they husband and wife? Yes, they yeah. are, yeah. But f- for the whole kind of like, they were leaning into the thing that people thought it was brother and sister. So they would purposefully do things that, you know, a man and wife would do whilst pushing the narrative that they were brother and sister, like kissing each other on stage and doing stuff like that because they knew fans would. thought that they were brother and sister. And it kind of like it's a rogue created thing to this do. whole like era of questionable things and it was a very strange like publicity stunt to do but i think they kind of played into the ethos of white stripes initially and people are, is that the band where it's brother and sister because with it only just being a man and a woman it's really difficult to tell yeah. what their dynamic is i don't like that no no it's not very yeah let's That's see if i do fun like a fact your next album my next then. album is the queen is dead the smiths oh 1986 so you only have it too higher than me yeah oh I expected you to have it like second. No, no, it was it was a contender for the top three. It was, yeah. but about an hour before we started this, I pushed it back up. Um, so for this, for me, is Big Mouth Strikes Again. So good choice in that song. Uh, I know it's over, which is I nearly put that. You know, yeah, I, ne- I had it wrote down. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I really like that track. And then obviously there is a light that never goes out. Yeah, I had um. What what what, what was what was your other one? Big Mouth. No, the other one. I know it's oh, over. I know it's over. Yeah, I had that wrote down until I got to some girls are bigger than others, and then I thought I just got to get you that. You gotta in put there. that yeah. one in, yeah. But, but I mean, we spoke about the album before, and I never used to really like the Smiths because I was in the band. I was in the camp of, um, oh fuck the Smiths. That's some kind of like pretentious. Why are you listening to them? And then I found out some of my mates liked them and would put them on in the background, and I kind of started to go. You know started vibing. This a is bit, all like, right, okay. yeah. And re-listening to this album again. Um, I listened to it maybe yesterday or the day before in full and it, it was just really good. It is. It's just really good album. Like I I don't think I I know they are completely rated as they should be. I personally don't think I gave them enough credit mm-hmm. as an artist because I just kinda cast them to the side. But listening to this again, I'm like yeah, they are good. I understand why there was so much hype about them. Yeah, it's it. like when people say shit like the Beatles were overrated and too many people talk about them. No, they fucking weren't. They, they, they were weren't. great. The time, because you've got to take into consideration 1986. Like the time they came out, there wasn't really that many people doing that. I mean, there was a couple of other bands, but not quite how they achieved it. And yeah, I think. Big think ratings to the Smiths. There. Yeah, number I sh- four. I wish they'd actually just get back together and do a couple of gigs. It would be cool, yeah. I think yeah. Morrissey does some Smith songs. Yeah, no, at both his of them shows. do. So yeah. does Johnny Marr, but yeah. just, just get together for a show or two, boys. You're both getting on a bit. You Isn't know it I mean? a bit? Is it a bit Oasisy? Is that what it is? Do they not like each other? I don't, yeah, I, well, they don't like each other. No, um, I read something on this the other day, and it was I think it was Johnny Marr saying that he just would never do it. Like he I would mean, never I get do it. it again. I get it. He's but, a pretentious arsehole, Johnny Morrissey. Yeah. Oh well. Um, <laughs> hey, how on to number three? three. Hunter number three. The third best indie rock oh, album of all time. Squeaky bum time. It's not squeaky bum time. I think this is an absolute banger. And it is Kings of Leon, Only by the Night. Ooh, okay. So when I was growing up in England, these were the one American indie rock band that just seemed to be album after album, having hit after hit. Mm-hmm. And some of the hits off this, these must have been battling for the biggest indie rock song of the year at exactly the same time, because you've got You Somebody and Sex is on Fire. I forgot they did them, yeah, fucking hell. On the same album. On the same album. Absolutely belting. Uh, and then my other big track, or the track that I like the most off this album is Closer. Mm-hmm. But Kings of Leon on this album just hit a home run, in my opinion. I think as far as indie rock goes, it's it's hard to top this. It's got some heavier tracks, not mad heavy, some lighter tracks, catchy riffs throughout, catchy lyrics throughout, and it did numbers. 
I mean, it can't be questioned. Yeah. I've not really got much and to it, say it, on it. Like most of the albums we've picked on this list, list so far have been debut albums. This was they built up to it. They had, I think, three albums before this, and they'd crafted their work to this level, to mm. this point, and then boom. I think these are one of those bands that kind of gets lumped in with the Killers yeah. and those sort of bands as well, which I think is not a bad set of bands to be. Oh, lumped definitely in with not, because they they're phenomenal. They, these these Kings of Leon, the Killers. Um, can't really think of any others, but the songs that they had that were they became so big over here for an American band yeah. that you would think that both of those bands were British bands by the amount of radio play they get, by the amount of people that would know those tracks. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I think that's a that's a great third choice. I Thank like you. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah. What's yours? So this is the album, right? That when I was researching for this episode, I hadn't really listened to this much. I'd heard some tracks off it. Um, but I'd never listened to it top to bottom. And after listening to it top to bottom, in the same way with the Smiths, I've kind of found a new love that I didn't know I had for this particular band. And it is Neutral Milk Hotel. So the album I've gone for from them is In the Airplane Over the Sea. So this album Bro, was... Bro, Defo Googled this. What do you mean? Defo Googled best indie rock albums. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying when I was doing research for this Neutral list. Milk Hotel. Yeah, man. Yeah. I was surprised. What by, even is that? I was surprised by how fucking good this album is. This is what I was saying. You know, when I said before this episode, I'm going to give one where you're going to go, what the fuck is that? That's All this right, album. Well, you, you tell the people. Yeah. So this album um, is just, I don't know, from, from top to bottom, it's like a story is being told throughout the whole album. The, the tracks flow into one each, one another mm -hmm. and you could listen, you could probably listen to each track on its own and go, this is a fucking amazing track. But then you could, if you listen to it from top to bottom in the way that it was intended, it makes it even better. And I know we spoke about the craft of albums in the past and um, like how artists nowadays don't really care about albums and the set list and how it plays out the track list for an album. Uh, you can tell that a lot of thought and care was put into this album as a whole. Um, it's very moving. There's some tracks on there that kind of hit home with me. There's some tracks about his father and stuff like that. And okay. it was very like, it was an emotional experience, an experience listening to this album that I hadn't experienced since like I was like late teenage years. So you know, when you, you get really emotional about something and I wasn't, I really wasn't going to put this on my list because I thought I don't even really know this band. Mm -hmm. I'd, I've only ever listened to this album, but because of the feeling that it gave me listening to it, I genuinely like, I'm sold by this album. I've added two of the songs to my uh, like songs and that, and like I found it's great. So the songs I'm going to go for are, um, King of the Carrot Flowers Part 1. It's a bit folky and upbeat, but it's pretty chill. This album kind of gives me a little bit of... Um, people will kill me for saying this. Panic of the Disco early vibes okay. in the folkiness of stuff, but not as upbeat and not as, like, jokey as you'd call you it. You love Panic at the Disco. <laughs> I loved Panic at the okay, Disco, yeah. should we say. Um, and then Holland 1945. That has some really noisy guitars on it. It's very cool riffs in there. Uh, it's a lot of like sound and noise and it just, it, it's like a sonic experience. Mm -hmm. uh, and then In the Aeroplane Over the Sea, which is the title track of the album. Uh, I just think, I'd, I can't believe I didn't know of this album prior to it. And if you've never listened to this album, Please, please listen to this fucking album. I shall listen to this album. It's really good. And like it's, it's a visceral connection. It's genuinely it's visceral like it's genuinely like touched me. No. <laughs> it's touched me deep. Um but yeah, like I say, I think it's just because it gives me emotions that I've not I've become a cold withered stone of a man. <laughs> and this kind of let me this gave me all a right, new, all right, all a right, new all lease right. on I don't know. I, I, yeah, I like it. I like it. I really it's good like when it. an album does that. Yeah. I agree. It's quite rare nowadays compared to when. Stop looking at my list. You're a child. I actually didn't see it. I'm just looking in that direction. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, I'll check it. I'll solid. see if it's as it's good as really as number three. Um, my number two. The 1975. I knew it. I fucking knew it. I fucking knew it. I goddamn knew it. Let me guess. The 1975 by the 1975. <laughs> no. 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 Well, then it's wrong. Because that's the only one that I'd accept. It's the 1975, a brief inquiry into on online relationships. I don't even know what the fuck Let that me is. say that is. Let me say that again. <laughs> I can't, I knew I'd, do you know when you read it? I, and yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, the 1975, a brief inquiry into online relationships. 
I don't know if it's inquiry or inquiry. I feel like American. Inquiry is American. Yeah. Inquiry is American. Anyway, um, absolute banger of an album by the best British indie rock band of the last 15 years. Number two. This is number two. Number two. You didn't even choose the 1975 by the 1975 for this. No. That's insane to me. Well, this is a better album. Okay. It is. Definitely. It's my favourite album by them. Okay, go on. I'll Um, let you you finish. Some big bangers. Give Yourself a Try, uh, which is the first proper track on the album. You don't fucking shut up about that song either. That is like one of your favourite 1975 songs, I think. Yeah, it is. Absolute belter. And they stole the riff from Joy Division Disorder. So it kind of has a... They they are a legendary indie band that probably could have been on either of our lists. They haven't made it, but that album has got songs named after it. 1975 stole this riff. It's a little bit different, but you know know exactly where it's come from, Um, which makes it even more of a banger because it's just got kind of both genres kind of twisted in there. Um, Love It If We Made It, which for me is live, one of my favourite songs. It's quite a hard-hitting song, and it's got some real deep meaningful lyrics about what's going wrong in the world people dying who shouldn't be gay rights racism etc etc and why was that so funny no oh, it doesn't matter keep going you're a horrible man it's just funny that he's talking about that shit when he makes the jokes that he makes i don't know it just feels yeah, a well, bit very about face anyway um i always want to die sometimes is another sad boy banger and has become one of my favourite, the 1975 songs. But to be honest, this album from top to bottom, in my opinion, is the best work. And in my opinion, there isn't really any better indie bands around right now that are still active than the 1975. Still producing banger albums, selling out every tour, headline in every festival. Tell me an indie band that's still active and doing that. It's nothing about the band. I'm not. I'm not going against Go the on, band. I'm going tell against, me one. I'm going against your album choice for the band that I don't like. That even I can accept. Wait, 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 wait. That wait that's wait, wait. not their best album. You have never listened to this album. I've heard some of the songs off it though. Yeah, but <laughs> I know. I know enough about. Do you know what? Do you know what? I'll give you this one thing. I'll give you this one thing. You ready? Right. Give yourself a try. Is an all right track. I will say that. I will say that. See, I knew you'd have that reaction. And do you know the only reason why I somewhat think that song's okay is because of how much you fucking overplayed it. It's not been overplayed to the point like Radio One would. It's been played enough that it's an earworm in my fucking head. Like you and know all I can hear is, I can give myself a try. That bit, it's fucking, I just, that Yo, is, I just hear that. I'll accept you singing a little bit of the 1975. Yeah, That's fairs. acceptable. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I don't know why you don't think that this is, well, you try to say this is not indie or something. No. No, I just don't think it's their best album. Yeah, but you haven't even listened to it. No, but I just think the 1975 by the 1975 like is me. categorically the 1975's best album. No, nah, it's most it is definitely not their best album. I don't know. It's it's got <laughs> that's the only one I've listened to. <laughs> it's got the majority of their big songs on, but that doesn't make it their. Well, in fact, does it? Somebody somebody else <laughs> is on a different on album. There. Yeah, but somebody else is their biggest track, and that's not on either of these albums, either the ones we mentioned. Anyway, it's not. I can't really debate at all when it's 1975. There's nothing I can do other than say what I know about them, which is very, very little. What's your number two, Tim? My number two is Surfer Rosa by the Pixies, 1988. You've played this too safe. What do you mean I've played this too safe? You've just Googled it. I haven't Googled you this. Have. No, what the fuck? No, you have. This, I this, know you have, because when I Googled it, you've picked loads of the answers that were just the first couple this, on Google. This, no, fuck off. No, 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 no. This album has the biggest indie track perhaps ever on it, and I don't think it can be denied by that. Carry on. Can I? Yeah. Am I all Continue. right Continue. Am I all I right I mean, the too? Pixies have a couple of bangers, but... So, this, the artists, like... Have, have talked about this album loads. Really big artists that are geniuses. You've got David Bowie. Mother, mother. He was influenced by it. He was fucking amazed by it. You had uh, Mother, Mother, yeah, yeah. He went on to say how much he loved it. Um, Kurt Cobain, he said this was a great inspiration for him and this was an album that was very big for him. There was a lot of musical geniuses that have classified this album as one of their favourite albums of all time. Uh, and I, you know, I, I can't disagree with it. Have you ever listened to... It from top to bottom. Have you up to this week? No. Well, you always try to rinse me every episode saying, oh, well, how can you put that? You've never listened to Guns N' Roses. Yet you come on with an album you'd never listened to up to this week. Well, I did it with number three as well. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? <laughs> 
hey now, them's the moves, all right? I don't think you can be angry at me because no, I don't I've dispute the shout. Some, some good shouts here. I don't dispute and the shout, it was, but it's just a rogue shout from you. Well, the thing is, there's there's artists, there's other artists that you can throw into the mix, but when it comes to the Pixies, well, it's just Pixies, not the Pixies. Um, I think they are categorically one of the best indie bands going, or at least were one of the best indie bands going. I'm not too sure if they're still going to this day. No. Um, it's there's a nice mixture of like hardcore punk, uh, a bit of noise in there, um, a lot of influences from a lot of different genres and i think that's one of the reasons why it resonated so well with me i think the thing is when i was kind of researching this albums that had more of a heavier kind of Twins. noise sound to it definitely resonated with me more which i was surprised by um neutral milk hotel being as resonating as it was because it's not particularly heavy but there are some like large guitar parts right. in there with some distorted guitar this that and the other um it's got a very it's a very live sound to it and i think pixies have always had that kind of feeling of it feels like it's just been recorded in the studio with microphones rather than it being you know like an actual studio produced album. Um, they, they use a lot of cool techniques on this album as well. Like at one point they have the vocalist screaming through a um, amp, um, which essentially they're doing the back masking where they use a speaker as a microphone. So some of the vocals were recorded through somebody shouting into a guitar amp. Okay, yeah. And they were just trying loads of different things. And they somehow were, they, they mixed elements together that kind of made you feel like it, it caught your attention, mm. basically, is the way that I'd explain it. You listen to it and you think this is very interesting. Sonically, it sounds insane. And somehow it works. Somehow it gets in your ears and it just you just oh. vibe with it. Uh, songs off it that I'm going to go with are Gigantic, um, Something Against You, and The Biggest. Or, uh, so it's whether the White Stripes get it with Seven Nation Army or whether Pixies get it with Where Is My Mind. Yeah, it's close. They are two absolute in indie bellers. When you when you take away from the fact of how many times you've listened to Where Is My Mind and you think about what that song is and how it's put together and all the vocal lines over the top and all that stuff, it's insane that that song's as big as it is. Maybe this is one for the people. What's a bigger indie track, Where Is My Mind or Seven Nation Army? Oh, that's a good shout. That's so a It's a shout. tough question. I it don't know which one question. I pick. They're yeah. both humongous. Do I think I actually think Where Is My Mind is a better song? Oh yeah, but yeah, which, definitely. Which is bigger? Which is, which had a bigger impact? Which had a bigger listener base? Which had more buys, listens? I don't know. I if actually it, honestly, don't. if it wasn't for this song, they probably would have still made the list, but it probably would have been much higher up. They probably would have been about five or six, but because of that one track, I couldn't not put them up there because there was White Stripes as well were a contender for my uh, top five, but then in the end, I just binned them off entirely because I wasn't too sure if they fell into the indie category or not. Okay. That's one of the main issues I've had curating this list was the fear of <laughs> this is not indie. With the amount of rogue shouts I've come with in the past that perhaps haven't been pop punk, didn't want to, you know, test the waters here i wanted to play it very safe in line should we move on to number one yeah the best indie rock album of all time is whatever people say i am that's what i'm not okay yeah fairs. it's fairs. good like i had it as my number one debut album of all time i believe and i think as far as indie rock goes this is the gut um people might be hurt people might say well yeah it didn't have as big an impact as the Smith or something like that. Even, uh, who did I mention? Joy Division. Obviously, they were the founders of the genre, mm -hmm. but I don't think that that means they had the best album. Yeah, no, definitely not. Arctic Monkeys had more time to curate and listen to all these bands and take hints from each one of them. And as we mentioned earlier, I think it perfectly captures British culture in that moment. And even to this day still resonates to, to a high level with a lot of what's going on in Britain, especially in like some of the poorer areas and poorer towns, etc. Um absolute banger. I bet you look good on the dance floor, Mardi Bum and Fake Tales of San Francisco Ooh. are my favourite tracks off this album. I don't think much more needs to be said. Go listen to the top ten debut albums if you want to hear more on it, because I don't want to just repeat myself every episode, but I, I think that this is just number one for me. I mean, that's fair enough. And I think what you're saying there about certain genres being defined by the first acts that kind of did it, like you're saying with the Smiths and Joy Division and that, 
like you say, I don't think that necessarily means they made the best album because, like, for example, let me pick a genre like new metal. Mm. The first albums in new metal weren't particularly the best albums in new metal, but they were most formative because bands then took that as a blueprint and said, right, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And then you got albums like, you know, Slipknot, System of Down, you got. Uh, and I think Link people Park. view it in that way because the first albums that probably came out, especially for some older people, The Smiths, etc., were the albums that originally got them into that genre. Mm -hmm. So they hold them in higher regard because up until that point, they'd probably not heard anything like it. But just because you've not heard anything like it doesn't mean that the albums that came from it aren't better overall pieces of work. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Bish Bash Bosh, what's your number one, Tim? So my number one pick is one that we've spoken about a lot recently. It was in your list and... Um, I really, really underrated this band as a whole, um, and I didn't realize how much I like them. I've started to play a lot of their songs on bass now. Um, I'd kind of gone through their entire discography at this point and like initiated myself into them, and it's The Strokes. Is this it? That would be my number one pick. And I'm surprised by that. It's No, I was surprised too. I was really surprised. Um, I didn't think that The Strokes would be a band that I'd ever properly get into. Mm -hmm. And I've always known of them, but I put them in the same category in my head as like Block Party and MGMT and all those where I'm like, I know the songs more than the band. But with the amount of high praises that have been sung about it, I mean, you like said a lot about them. Mm. I've kind of gone back and listened to them. This album as a whole, fantastic from top to bottom, but not just this album. Yeah, the, the Strokes, strokes. It, it was, there was a few albums that, you know, like it, I think there's a few options that The Strokes could have been at multiple points on this list, um, but Is This is, is clearly their best work that they've done. It's inspired so many people. It's just fantastic. The tracks I've gone with, Hard to Explain, Someday and Last Night. Again, you hear them absolutely everywhere. And I think in terms of UK indie, this is one of the most formative influential you know it's mad because they're american that, as well yeah yeah like, it, the fact that they had this big an impact in britain when mm -hmm. they're american is rare as we've said for a few of these it's, bands it's yeah indie seems to be the one genre where influence of music on uk artists seems the biggest mm -hmm. because like rap and that yeah it's all right but we've got grime and we've got all those different subgenres with indie it's crazy how much the crossover is that oh. even bands from America can but just. But then slot a lot in of the big here. ones are British as well. Oh well, yeah. yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Banging. I'm not arguing with that at all. I'm Come on, with it. I've made it out. I've made it out. <laughs> However, uh oh, I do think in years to come, when you look back at this list, you'll look back at it with deep regret that most of them just came from Google instead of it from wasn't ones you actually like. Just liked. come from Google, though. That's the thing. It wasn't just come from Google. I feel like there's other indie albums that you've defo bumped for years that you didn't put in because you wanted to put. Such as who? Probably other Monkeys albums, other Strokes albums, The Killers. Oh yeah, The Killers, they were tempted I to was, be put I in was there. tempted to put yeah, them in. I know, but then but again, this is the thing. My problem was, it wasn't so much as what albums have I bumped and what haven't I bumped. I, Radiohead could have been in my list, but I didn't put them in for the fear of what the fuck is indie? What is indie is such a, can we just speak about that for a second? Indie is such a broad category because there's people, there's obviously indie rock and there's indie as a whole. And there's so many bands that fall into that category. And some would even argue artists like Dizzy Rascal fall into indie because he's independent. Who has ever said that? It's no, but not indie, in indie rock. No, not in indie rock. No, but I mean indie as a yeah, whole. Well, yeah, he would be if he's independent. But in indie rock is more. I think indie rock probably started as independent rock bands, but then it just became its own sound and type of thing. It's obviously not independent bands anymore because none of them too, are. It's too broad of a genre. It's weird that there isn't more subgenres within that genre. If that makes sense. Yeah, I mean there probably is. I just don't look I into them. Yeah, I know. We did it on a broad level anyway. Um, my honourable mentions, I don't have tracks for them. I do for two of them, but some of them I just, just whacked down there because I've got a few, so I didn't want to just ramble on for three hours. Um, so I'm just going to go over the first three really quickly. Three of my honourable mentions are the Libertines' self-titled album, another band where people don't realise how big they were, Headline Reading and Leeds, I believe even Headline Glastonbury at one point, or were high up on the main stage. Absolutely massive band. And their self-titled album... Libertines never got quite as much recognition as some of the Arctic Monkeys and stuff that were around at the same time as them, but they were a fantastic band and all their albums are really good, actually. 
Um, Kaiser Chiefs employment. Ooh, that's a show. That's a show. Kaiser Chiefs are very underrated in the indie rock scene. Admittedly, their most recent work hasn't been quite as good as the earlier albums, but their first three albums were banging and they're the biggest band to come from Leeds, so they deserve a shout out. Um, Falls, what went down? Scene Falls headline Leeds Festival this year. It was indie. Yeah. Really? Definitely. See, this is the point. How the fuck is now, that? Falls are definitely indie. All right, okay. All right. I don't know. You, you, you're you weird, you. No, <laughs> what the fuck? You're fuck weird. off, man. You've questioned the 1975 and Falls been indie, but not questioned some of the other probably more sus ones. Anyway, uh, yeah, what went down? Big banger, Falls have been around for years, and in my opinion, this is the best album. Do you want to give some of yours before I go on to the ones? Have you not got any? Oh, all right, cool. Uh, a very, very recent artist in Sam Fender with hypersonic missiles. My songs from this, uh, The Borders, That Sound, and Hypersonic Missiles. It's been a little while since a new indie artist came around in the UK and really was adopted as quickly and as massively as Sam Fender was. He went from no one knew him to three years later, selling out St. James's Park multiple nights in a row, headlining Reading and Leeds, doing his own Finsbury Park concerts. And this album was what started it. He's only got two albums, but in my opinion, Hypersonic Missiles is fucking unbelievable. And then the last one. Oh. Did Jake Bug fall into indie? Yeah, but he's gash, isn't he? I don't like him, but... Yeah, he's indie, but he's he rubbish. Indie as well? Rubbish. The way is this indie? Yeah, but I just didn't is want him in my because list. Because it's more like rock. That's why I didn't include him. Because anyway. I was like, is it indie? I fucking know anymore, man. I've lost my brain with this list. I hated making this list. It was like a minefield. <laughs> my last pick is a band that we have had on the podcast and one of the most consistent indie rock connoisseurs in the UK, The Wombats, yes. with Proudly Presents a Guide to Love, Loss and Desperation. Two, well, actually... The first album. First album. Mm. And three of these tracks uh, on the level of could potentially be one of the biggest British indie rock songs ever. We've got Kill the Director, Moving to New York... And let's dance to Joy Division. I'm surprised these didn't make your debut list. That's surprising. Mm, yeah, but like all time in the world, it's probably not. Top I guess. 10. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. And like, yeah, I love the yeah. Wombats, and I think this album's fantastic. But the reason it didn't make it into this list is because really, it's only these and maybe one or two more songs. So I don't bump the full thing. Right. Okay. I was actually yeah. I do more for the Wombats later albums. I think they've just gone on to be fucking consistency kings. I say it all the time. Um, but yeah, they're my honourable mentions. I do think that a lot of indie bands are very consistent in terms of the output that they have. Like, it's, the majority of them do kind of go from stride to stride and every album is at least somewhat decent and has two or three bangers on it. Um, I think it's because it's such an easily accessible genre. It's very easy listening. It's not too aggressive, but it's also heavy enough that it kind of appeals to the people that would want the heavier stuff. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. All right. Should we read yeah. our top 10 list from top to bottom? Let's do it. <laughs> Let's fucking do it. I'll go first. So my top 10 indie albums of all time. Number 10, The Kooks, Inside In, Outside Out. Number nine, Block Party with Silent Alarm. Number eight, Two Door Cinema Club, Tourist History. Number seven is Jamie T, Panic Prevention. Number six, The Smiths, The Queen Is Dead. Number five, The Strokes, Is This It? Number four is The White Stripes, Elephant. Number three, Kings of Leon, Only By The Night. Number two, The 1975, A Brief Inquiry Into Online Relationships. And number one is The Arctic Monkeys, Whatever People Say I Am, That's What I'm Not. It's an all right list. Honourable mentions of The Libertines' self-titled record, Kaiser Chiefs' employment, Falls' What Went Down, Sam Fender Hypersonic Missiles, and The Wombats' Proudly Presents a Guide to Love, Loss, and Desperation. It's a solid list. It's a solid it is pretty list. solid. Right. Top 10. <clears throat> this is my top 10. What the fuck is it? This is, this is my top 10 indie albums. Indie rock. Indie rock. I fucking, I'll get lambasted right, if I keep indie. You Not right? really, no. Come this on, is read my, them out. This is my top 10 indie rock albums of all time. Number 10, Franz Ferdinand, self-titled. Number nine, whatever people say I am, that's what I'm not, Arctic Monkeys. Number seven, number eight, Vampire Weekend, Vampire Weekend. Number seven, Transatlanticism by Death Cab for Cutie. Number six, The Stone Roses, self-titled. 
Number five, favorite worst nightmare, Arctic Monkeys. Number four, the Queen is dead, the Smiths. Number three, in the airplane over the sea, Neutral Milk Hotel. Number two, Surfer Rosa, Pixies. And number one, is this it, the Strokes. Damn, people are going to be stroking off to that list for real. <laughs> Popping <laughs> them out. It. Yeah, thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much. Like, follow, subscribe, follow again, and subscribe twice. Yeah, make a new YouTube account now. Yeah, do it. And yeah, why up. not? If, you, if you're actually a fan of this channel, you do that for us. And also check out our other top 10 list if you enjoyed this. We've got rap, <gasps> pop punk, debut albums, uh, there'll be more. underrated there pop punk. Underrated pop punk, there'll be more though. There will be more. Well, I don't know if there'll be more top 10s. There's at least one more top 10 list that we can do. What? Self-titled. Yeah, top 10 self-titled. All right, cool. Come back. That. More music content, please. All right, bye-bye. <laughs>